Hi everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog and today I just want to come at you with a really simple practical tip how to send your Ableton Live sets to someone so that they can work on the project that you've been working on. That way you can collaborate, you can send your files for your friend to remix, to brainstorm on, you can share works in progress, you don't have to just send audio files, you can just send uh, an Ableton Live set. Now the problem with this is that Ableton Live saves its files as a .als file, which is an Ableton Live set file. And inside a .als file, it doesn't contain any audio. This is compared to, for instance, other formats where, like Photoshop, for instance. In a Photoshop file, if you save a Photoshop file, all you've got to do is share the, I think it's a PSD file. I think you just share the PSD file, someone else opens it and they get all the files that they need saved inside of the PSD file. Not so for Ableton, not the case. So Ableton is more like a database that it has a little database that references sample files where they are on the hard drive. And if it doesn't find those samples where it expects to find them, it just says, oops, can't help you. So I'm going to show you what the difference looks like in Ableton. Now we're in Ableton and we see three things here. We see a sample that is offline. We see a sound that is online that is actually correct. And then when I click away, I also see this big red thing here at the bottom saying media files are missing. Please click here to learn more. So this big red one is a nightmare. When you open up your file and you see, oh no, all the media files are missing. What am I going to do? First of all, just realize that these sample samples being offline, it's really inconvenient because those samples could be anywhere on your hard drive, right? You've probably opened up some folders, dragged your samples in, then sent your Ableton Live set to someone, but because they don't have the same sample in the same location on their computer, it just won't find it. So the real secret here is the option called collect all and save. That's really the heart and soul of what I'm going to be saying here today. So when you hit, like first let's just save the live set. Let's just save it and it's called... Um, Okay, let's just save it in a new location and call this tutorial set. Okay, save. Now let's go have a look at what was actually created. So this is the file location where I saved it. And instead of creating it just an ALS file, what it did is it created a folder with a little icon. This is just a, indistinguishable from another folder, okay? It's just a folder that's called the Tutorial Set Project. And inside, there's a .als file, as we predicted, and a couple of other things, a couple of other things. And right now, these are honestly pretty useless things. Um, this is just an ALS file, and these, these two files are not saved anywhere. First of all, this, this first one is missing, so we're not going to be able to save it. But this second one, if we wanted it to be bundled up with this ALS file, we would just have to collect all and save. And just hit yes on all of these. That means that, yeah, even if it has to duplicate some files every now and then, it's not a big deal. Just say yes, 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 yes. Boom, and it's copying a bunch of files. Now, let's look at that same folder. Boom, we're in the folder. Now, there's a whole bunch of extra stuff there. So I go back up a level. So here's just the tutorial set project. And inside, we see a folder called Ableton Project Info, a, project, a folder called Backup, the desktop.ini. But the most important thing here is the samples folder. And inside the samples folder, that's where the real magic happens. So look at that. That Emmanuel quantum locking track there that I was going to use as a reference track, it's now included in it. So... Voila. So now to send this to someone, effectively what they really need is the .als file and the samples folder. That really is the heart of it. That's what you need to send to someone so that they can open up the .als file and all the pointers in that .als file will be pointing towards the samples folder. Now, um, how to do that? Well, you can either just uh, like uh, zip them up into a zip or you go to the tutorial set project folder and that whole folder you can zip it up 
And then you go to this website. I don't know if everyone is familiar with this website, but they really should be. It's called WeTransfer. And this magnificent cat here. <laughs> um, what you do is you just drag your stuff in onto the onto the browser. And then um, you can just click get a link. It's now going to transfer all that. So that's like 14 megabytes. Now, mind you, file like sample sizes get very large very quickly, especially uncompressed audio like .wav, WAV files. That gets very large. So don't be surprised if this suddenly reaches up to like like hundreds of megabytes or even a gigabyte or two. That has happened and that's normal, okay? Um, and so give yourself plenty of time for this upload to happen. And once once it's done, it'll give you a link and you send that link to your friend and your friend can download it and then open up that .als file and all the files that were included in it will be available. So this is then the link. This is something you just copy paste in text, in chat or whatever to your friend and you're good to go. OK, um, that is the basic workflow on how to share your your project on Ableton. Now, there's one use case that we have to look at, and that is what if you are using plugins that your friend does not have? OK, let's, let's let's take an example. Let me load up a plugin here. Now, here's a cute little silent. Let me program some notes on there. Just something pretty random. I'm just trying to make this an example, right? Okay. And let's go for... Oopsie. Awesome. So um, now that we've got this, imagine I want to send this to my friend and my friend does not have silent. Oh, no. Or even has a different version of Silent, or his Silent is, pro is installed somewhere differently and it has a different registration number or something like this. Uh, there's a million reasons why your plugins may not register on your friend's plugin, on your friend's Ableton Live set. So don't don't stress about it. The thing the thing to do is is to use Ableton's freeze function. So there's this freeze track function, right? When you hit freeze track. Okay, what it really is doing is it's creating an audio version of all this MIDI information, of this synthesizer playing. It's creating an audio version um, and stopping you from changing any parameters here because it wouldn't make any sense. And whenever you hit play, it's, uh, it's really just playing the audio version. So this information right now is not going into the silent, which is then not generating sound. It's just actually playing us back an audio sample, which is, uh, which is hidden. Uh, you can you can un you can show it by making a duplicate of the channel and then flattening it. This this is actually what's being played when we hit play on on this this audio sample. So, what you could do is, you can freeze your track. And then when you do collect all and save, we can go into our project, have a look. Now under samples, there's a couple of folders now. And I think it's probably going to be processed. Yeah, look, under processed, there's a folder called freeze. And under freeze, there is an automatically generated file name, which is the file name that you need to be able to play this audio back. So if you send this to your friend like this, they will open it up, they will see this to be blue, and they will say, okay, um, this was a silent, and they can decide to unfreeze it if they actually have silent and if everything works. But if they don't have it, they can still hear the project as you intended. They can also flatten it if they want to, and then work on the audio. That opens up a whole new range of possibilities. So if your stuff, if your music is already sounding pretty good with... Uh, with um, uh, with your synthesizers programmed as you wished. Well, then with the audio, it's still going to sound as good. And your friend can take it from there and use that audio and run it through effects and do everything with it. Uh, the only thing that they won't really be able to do is change like the note pattern. So if, if you wanted to play a different note pattern, that might be a bit difficult. Um, now, once you've done all this stuff, don't forget always to hit collect all and save at the end. Okay, always 
do make that the last thing you do before you send it, okay? Because it's just a one-time action that takes all the files and puts it in that folder. And you don't have to like take this particular sample out here. You just, it's all inside the samples folder. You, you can consider this like a black box that you don't have to open. You can just, as long as the ALS file and the samples folder are in there, you're good to go. Send it through WeTransfer and enjoy having a wonderful time with your friends um, and just collaborate, 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 keep sending files, but pay attention to this, the ALS file plus the samples folder, then you're good to go, okay? Now here's a little example of a project that a student has sent me. Uh, me and this student have gone over uh, a lot of a lot of uh, headaches sending files forward and backwards, and so now we've got the system down pretty pretty smoothly now finally. So when I open up a file that he sends me, it says fail to load the audio unit silent one, which you know as you just saw I actually have silent one. So don't know why it does that, but. Just don't trust, don't trust that the, your plugins will automatically work on the other computer. Um, and I'm just going to hit OK. And now, first thing you notice, every single freaking track is, um, is blue. All the way down. Very nicely organized project, by the way. Lovely color coding. Drums, percussion in one group. Synths in another group. Everything blue. So Ableton has rendered audio underneath every single one of these. A lot of Diva plugin, as you can see, a lot of Silent plugin. And so just to be 100% certain that no sounds were missing, he just froze everything. So there's uncompressed WAV files playing back behind each one of these tracks that I can reveal by just doing flatten. And if I do flatten and I zoom in, you can see there, it's just audio. Um, on the downside, this massive, um, this massive, massive project, well, I mean, this is a, a pretty healthy looking project and it's six minutes. So all this uncompressed audio for about six minutes uh, was massive. So it's about just a bit over a gigabyte, maybe a gigabyte and a half size to send that through WeTransfer, which is honestly quite ambitious. But you know what? If you can just, um, if you can just take the time to do that, then uh, you are giving, you're opening up a world of possibilities for your friend to collaborate, uh, and it's going to be, it's going to lead to great results. So if you liked what you just saw, actually we do this a lot every day. We run an online electronic music school called Underdog. We're based in Brussels in Belgium, uh, but due to Corona, we went online and we give we give two levels of classes. We give boot camps and we give deep dives. And the boot camps are for people who have never ever made music before and they want to learn how to start making electronic music, how to start having fun and expressing themselves. And then the deep dive is for people who are already producing and want to take that to the next level and have some coaching and accompaniment and group workshops and things like this. We also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching for uh, if you want to just get some perspective and some feedback. And the real advantage of Underdog Classes is that we uh, we use very little recorded content, little to no recorded content. These are all real classrooms, real people, real interactions. Um, it's really just just like a physical classroom, but but virtual, right? Uh, we have curriculums. We have we have structured ways of learning things from A to Z. With a, in a real classroom with, with, with real humans, with a real professor who's going to teach you through Zoom. Uh, we're going to show you the software. We're going to show you how everything works. And you can give continuous feedback. You can ask questions, all these kind of things. So it's really the, the offline classroom experience, but online. We've tried to bring it into the virtual world. Check us out on www.underdog.brussels. That's our website and you can find all the info about our courses there and maybe sign up or uh, just reach out to myself, oscar at underdog.brussels. Um, I'm always available to chat and to ask, uh, to answer any of your questions. Okay, so have a great day. Enjoy sharing uh, the Ableton project files, collaborate, have fun and uh, take care everyone. Peace out. Bye bye.